these messages look like. So let me stop sharing this piece and then let me share that screen and where you'll be able to find it within the Facebook group too. So all of these messages um, are within the Facebook group in guide seven. Guide seven is where we talk everything or talk all about just managing guest concerns, expectations, negative reviews. So we'll, you'll see here that we talk about scheduled messages and in this guide, we've breaking, broken each of them out. Each of them have been broken out. Um, do you have a legal contract for them to sign when they book directly? Absolutely. Absolutely. You should have a separate leasing agreement. Yes, yes, yes. So if you all ever need that or at the point when you do need that, just let me know and I'll be able to share it. Okay, so just looking at scheduled message one and understand that like we said eight messages, we're gonna go through seven here. Scheduled message zero is pretty much when they like send an inquiry. Like, hey, I'm interested in booking. Hey, thanks for your interest in booking with us and answer their question because they're likely asking you a question. That's all that message is. So thanks for your interest in booking with us. And now we're diving right into up on booking. This is what they're going to say. Let me zoom in so y'all can see as well. Oh, that's out. Okay. So schedule message one, up on booking, right? Hey, whatever their name is, within the Airbnb app, when you go into scheduled messages in the setup for this, you'll be able to add different, I guess, what are they called, fillers, to where you can say, hey, this is the place that I want to put whatever the guest's first name is, what they listed as their first name. And that's how you're able to make this personal. Meaning that it's going to say, like, it'll say, hey, guest first name for you. But for them, it's going to say, hey, Matt, hey, Brittany, hey, Michael. That is what it's going to say on their end. And it's going to personalize it for them. Um, thanks so much for booking with us. I'll be sending you over full check-in details and additional information closer to your arrival date. Let me know if there's anything your group will need prior to your arrival. Safe travels. This is also where you're able to mention if you're somebody who does want to do special things for your guests when they have a special occasion, let us know if you're celebrating something special. You, you know, you can mention that right here. We take special occasions very seriously. That's up to you. Again, that gets into an aspect to where you now have to personalize things. If they're celebrating an anniversary, you might want to leave a bottle of wine. But again, that's not something that you can necessarily automate unless you are leaving it within your cleaner's closet and you telling the cleaners to put it out for you. But then you also have to make sure you trust your cleaners that they not just taking your stuff. <laughs> so yes, that's where it gets, gets sticky. And then additionally, like I already said, if you want to include the fact that there is a security deposit, a separate one um, that you'll collect off of the Airbnb platform, you can mention that here as well. Um, understand that you can either, I've seen hosts collect that security deposit off of the Airbnb platform, number one, just because the, the guest is going to get it back a lot quicker. However, you do have the liberty to do that via the Airbnb um, help center as well, where you're able to send and request that money. But you're going to get it faster and then be able to send it back to them a lot faster so that they're not down your neck saying, hey, where's my security deposit at the end of their stay? But again, this is also information that you should include both here and in your listing details so that they know that there's a security deposit before they even book. Wait, I have a question about that. Um, so as far as the security deposit, I thought it only applied to certain mm -hmm. guests. Is that right? Yeah, so this is in the instance that if you have people that are booking, let's say that they might be under 25, or this is somewhere where, um, again, we've already said that the security deposit that Airbnb puts on your listing they don't take out for each guest and you're not going to know who they're taking it out for. Right. So this is why this is a separate one that if you are going to go this route and you are going to do this for each guest, you might want to put a zero security deposit on in your listing, um, like in the setting and then list that within the listing details that we collect a separate security deposit via Zelle for this reservation. If you are under, if you meet this, this certain criteria. But oh, okay. some people, ex exactly. So there could be a criteria that you have of if you're under 25, we're going to absolutely collect a security deposit. If you have more than, I don't know, the allotted, allotted amount of guests, we're going we're gonna to collect a security deposit, or you can just do it for all of the guests. I do it for specific guests. So if you're under a certain age, we're going to collect a security deposit. If you have more than, let's say, six guests, we're collecting a security deposit. The one on there, I still have on there. 
but they already know like I through my experience I've seen that even the ones that are under 25 I don't know the parameters for how Airbnb is collecting that security deposit from them so that's the only thing is like you don't know who Airbnb is collecting it from and then based on my experience I feel like they're not collecting it from anybody like I still haven't gotten to a guess where it's like, yes, Airbnb collected a security deposit. It's typically a matter of they'll say, when you make, um, at the end of your stay, if they, at the end of their stay, if they damaged anything, when you go into the help center and then you request like, okay, $50 because you damaged my nightstand, that is when the security deposit comes into play. And up to that amount is then what you're able to get. But the security deposit is still a very vague topic on Airbnb. Okay. Um, okay, scheduled message number two, meaning two days before they actually check in. So 48 hours before they're supposed to check in. This is pretty much when you're just getting them excited to be there, right? So, hey, it's almost check-in day. Celebration, right? In preparation for your arrival, please take a brief moment to review the listing details and house rules. Again, we're mentioning it again. In the instance, the number of guests in your reservation has changed. This information must be communicated prior to your arrival. And if you're celebrating a special occasion, let us know. This is another place where you can, again, mention that if you are somebody who celebrates special occasions for your listing. If not, it's okay. You might be somebody who makes every guest feel special. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, number three, because now we've told them, hey, you booked, they've heard from us two days before they get there, right? And then now they're hearing from us on the morning of check-in. Because what we want to avoid, we're scheduling these automate, automated messages because we want to avoid, again, having to go into this app and type all of this stuff out because that, that gets us further away from automation. Automation means that before you even ask the question, I'm giving you the information. So before you even ask, hey, I still haven't received the, the, the code to get in. I've already told you in your previous message, and I've had to tell other people that as well. Guess, if you read the previous message, you'll see that we said you'll get it at 3 p.m. That is, that's the piece that you want to communicate to them, right? Because some guests, and that'll also give you an indicator that they have not been reading your messages at all. So you might want to keep an eye on because they don't know your house rules. So again, early morning check-in, this is when I start listing information in terms of, hey, I just wanna reiterate a couple of house rules for you. So, hey, whatever your name is, happy check-in day. I look forward to your group's arrival this afternoon. At whatever your check-in time is, for most of you that might be 3 p.m., the entrance keypad code will be sent your way and you can reference the check-in instructions within the listing if you have any issues. Below, I've listed some helpful information for your stay. Again, just reiterating some house rules. Make sure you don't lock the bottom lock. For me, we have a keypad lock. I'm not giving you the key to the bottom lock. So that means you only need to lock the top lock. Some people then start locking themselves out. So this is something I reiterate. Don't throw the trash away outside of the home. For us, we have rodents like raccoons that'll come because we just live near trees, right? So again, thermostat. We're letting you know, if you wanna change it, shoot us a message. This is important information for them to know. This is where we also, right, let them know this is when the checkout time is. Um, unless you request it ahead of time, we do not allow late checkout because again, for me, we have same day check-in and check-out. So rather than getting that fee for like a late checkout, we rather just get another reservation. But our fee, if you do check out late, is higher because of that. So because our cleaners need to get in at 11 a.m., if you are there later than 11 a.m., you're now getting in between the time and we might have to let the next guest know that, hey, we won't be done by 3 p.m. And you're getting in the way of just a lot of stuff. So for us, if you do check out late, there's a $50 late checkout fee. And we do not have any exceptions on that. If you do not let us know beforehand. Um, and we just let them know it's rare for us to accommodate late checkout. So understand if your request is not approved and our goal is to ensure that you have the best time possible, right? So reiterate, please reach out to us. There should be no reason that if something is going wrong, you don't reach out. So what we say, my goal is to ensure you have the best time possible while visiting. So if there are any issues or if you have any questions about the city, please don't hesitate to reach out no matter how small. Again, keeping that line of communication open so that you're not getting to the point where they say the negative thing in the review. 
they say it to you before it even gets to that point. With the lock, what do you do if they lock the bottom lock and lock themselves out? That's when we have the um, lock box with the extra keys. That's why I tell you all, if you have a keypad lock, also have a lock box that they can get the physical keys with. If somebody just doesn't know how to work the keypad lock, if they get themselves locked out, the batteries die on your keypad lock, you should have that lock box. And even furthermore, you should have a lock box as well, just so that your cleaners can get in and get into the closet, unless you're just going to have them actually holding the key to get into the locked closet. Hopefully that piece makes sense. It does, thank you. I was just thinking like, so if they're handling a physical key, do you ever have issues with them like not putting the key back in the lock box, taking the key, do you charge them for the key, like stuff like that? I absolutely do. That's listed in our house rules. So if you lose the key, there is like a $200 fee, I think we list, which is crazy, right? But you have to make it crazy so that people make sure they don't lose it. But that's where we mention like, hey, there is a fee if you do lose the key. That's within the house rules. So now it's time for checking in, right? It is 3 p.m. It's time for checking in. Hey, Matthew, the code during your stay is whatever it is. Please be sure, again, to reference the check-in instructions in your reservation, letting them know there are step-by-step -step images that will guide you so that you don't lock yourself out. We take great pride in our reviews, so if at any point during your stay we are performing at less than five stars, please reach out and let us know. Your five-star review at the end of your stay means a lot to us. That's now you setting the expectation that, hey, I expect a five-star review. I'm gonna leave you one too, right? And you'll see that we actually say it in one of the later messages as well. I'll be leaving you a five-star review so that, don't, don't say it if they you're not leaving them a five-star review. <laughs> don't say it if you're not gonna do that. But again, this is where you wanna set that expectation that we want to provide you with the absolute best experience. If we are falling short, let us know because we want a five-star review at the end of the stay. Make that clear what you want. Yes, 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 yes. The lost keys, Tina. Um, okay, scheduled message that happens after they've, they've checked in, right? They're into the house. They got the code. They're good to go. This is now 24 hours after checking in, right? Hey, just checking in. How are you and your group enjoying your stay? Please let us know if there's anything we can do to create an even better experience for you. This is now your opportunity where it's like they've been in the house for about a day. You didn't have time to shower. You didn't have time to go in the kitchen. You've seen things. Is there something wrong? If you don't mention anything here, but then you turn around and mention something in the review, that's a problem because you checked in. You now have the liberty as a host to call Airbnb and say, hey, like, I just want, I, I would like for y'all to review it, right? They may not actually, you know, remove it depending on how it is, what they say in it. But hey, I want y'all to review this um, review that I just received because the guests did not let us know anything. We checked in, we asked if anything was wrong, if they were enjoying their stay and they didn't say anything. We didn't even know about this until the review came. That is when you're able to then say that. Do I ever let guests check in early? Absolutely. If I don't have another reservation there, like happening, then yeah, we let them check in early. It depends on how early though. If you're trying to check in at 11 a.m. and check in isn't until three, we might have to charge you. But if you're checking in like maybe 1.30, that's not bad for us. Um, okay, so now you've checked in, they let you know, uh, hey, everything's good. We're, we're thoroughly enjoying our stay, thank you, right? That's typically the message you wanna receive when you send that check-in message. Thanks for checking in. And honestly, most of them are going to thank you because a lot of hosts don't check in. Like the main piece, the main compliment um, that I receive as a host with all of my listings is our communication. The fact that, you know, she did an excellent job checking in on us. She made sure we had everything we needed. And this is why I say it's so important to have this communication because that could be the piece that saves you from having a two or three star review rather than just a four star. Because you were so nice and because you were so attentive, they're going to just knock one star off if something fell short. Or maybe they might not, might not knock anything off. I've had that happen as well, where they still give me a five-star review. And then in the private feedback section, tell me, hey, we just have these suggestions. And that's it. So again, now it's the morning to check out. We're now letting them know, hey, how was your group stay? We're asking again, how was your group stay? Information for checking out. We're letting you know again, check out is at 11 a.m. This is the same thing we said in the previous message. 
Again, we don't care if we're being repetitive. We need to. Up on checkout, here's what we need you to do. It was such a pleasure hosting you and your group. If there's ever anything that we could have done to make your stay more enjoyable, shoot us a message back and let us know. So you see how we're still avoiding this, leaving a negative review. Hey, if there's anything we could have done to make it more enjoyable, just shoot us a message back and let us know so that we can improve the stay of future guests, right? That is another opportunity where it's like, hey, you can let us know now. Some guests are still gonna go write you a negative review because they just petty. They're just petty. But this is your opportunity. At least you're opening that line of communication so that again, it doesn't happen. And even furthermore, you sent this message early in the morning. If they respond to you by 10, and you're like, oh, oh my goodness, we're so sorry. You got ahead of it before they could get to that point of writing a review. Again, you are in better chances of not having a low rating as a host. Um, and then our last message that we typically send, right? Two days after they check out, 48 hours after checking out. Hey, Matt, thanks so much for choosing um, to stay at whatever your listing name is. You're able to insert that in there too. Um, especially if you have numerous listings, that's where this gets really like intricate. You can insert different information. But thanks so much for choosing to stay at our place. We greatly appreciate feedback so, so that we can improve the stay of future guests. If you have not already, please take two minutes and provide us with a review of your stay. There's also a private note section where you can let us know any improvements we should make for the future. Again, kind of helping them, right? Like, hey, still, Please don't write that negative thing in a public review. Give it to us in a private note section of what we can improve. And again, that then makes it a point of like, okay, even though they may have rated you four stars, when somebody goes to the reviews, they're only going to see something good, right? They're going to see the note of what they wrote that was good. They're still going to see a rating, but they're not going to see specific ratings for each guest. And that's what then helps you because it then becomes an aggregate rating that you're getting for your listing. So those are all of the messages that you should have in place as a host um, when you are getting ready, when you have your listing, just to make sure that, again, you are having those touch points and you are managing the expectations of your guests. Now, let me see if there is. Yes. So then that is, um, those are all of the messages. 